2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. For the time, everybody say time. time. Will come. Will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. My, my, my. That's the time we're living in. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves gold and silver. No, that's not what it says. They shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. 1 Corinthians 10 and 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Tonight, just for a little while, I want to preach the compromised church. The compromised church. Amen. Let's go to the Lord tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you for this service, God. Lord, I pray, God, tonight that you will anoint me, God, to deliver the word, the message that you have for me to go give for this church tonight, God. Lord, I pray that you open every heart and eyes and mind tonight, God, to receive the word, God. Lord, I have prayed over this message. I have studied, God. I pray tonight, God, an anointing will come to me to preach it, Lord, as you would have me to deliver it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Everybody say amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. We know that Satan is subtle in his schemes and often working through compromise, deception, and distraction. The Bible warns us not to be ignorant of his devices. Let us not be deceived. The church today is a pillar of truth. It's a beacon of light in a dying and dark world. And we must endure sound doctrine in a controversial and a compromising world. Amen. Yet many churches tonight, uh, they have compromised their foundation and they're trading holiness for comfort. Uh, they're trading truth for tolerance. Uh, amen. And they're trading their convictions for compromise. But God's church is called to holiness. The word of God is clear tonight. In 1 Peter 1 and 16, it says, Be holy, for I am holy. You shall know the truth, and what? The truth shall set you free. Amen. Today, many modern uh, pastors and, and saints and churches, uh, they have watered down and diluted the gospel, uh, and they're turning grace into a veritable license to sin. And shockingly, many churches of our day, they have traded holy living for cultural acceptance. By, uh, by, but holiness, my friend, it is non-negotiable. I say holiness, it is non-negotiable in God's kingdom. Come on. God will never wink at sin, my friend. You might wink at it, but God never will wink at sin. Hallelujah. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost coming on me. We cannot look like the world. We cannot talk like the world and expect to be a church of the living God and experience God's peace and God's love and to not be anxious. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. Compromise, amen. It begins when we start justifying sin. It's when we allow ourselves, that is our flesh, to indulge in things that displease God and are disobedient to His Word. Some of you have been in church longer than most people have, and some in the latter years of your life have been dabbling and dealing and doing things that you absolutely have no business touching. Come on. I know I'm in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Church, we are 
in the world, but we are not of the world. We are called to be different, to be separated unto God. Sometimes I know that it's not easy. Amen. When everybody, I say when everybody's doing it, it ain't easy. Come on, ladies, I understand. I, I really do. Amen. When you walk into a, into a place of work, amen, and you're dressed holy, and they look like a, a dressed-up prostitute. Come on, I know. Amen. Everybody in there, they, make a, they look like Ronald McDonald with so much makeup on. And here you are looking holy, and they're looking down their nose at you. Come on, I understand all that. I understand, men, when you're at the plant and they're telling nasty, debauched jokes, amen, and about the woman that they were with the night before, and you over here talking about God. I understand those looks, amen. Living for God is not easy sometimes. Come on. The world is dark, and it's never been darker and we're living in difficult times. And so the question that I ask you tonight, the church, are you enduring? Are you surviving? Or are you thriving? Come on. Living for God is easy. Living easy is hard. Amen. When you live easy for God, it becomes mechanical. It becomes uh, uh, something to do. It becomes a social club, and you get tired of it. I, come on. I'm going deep tonight. Everybody say amen. amen. I'm just on the surface right now. Praise God. Woo, praise God. Why? Would a child of God, a blood-bought, spirit-filled believer, participate in something that exalts the darkness? I told you I'm fixing to go deep. Are you ready? Somebody's about to have a paraplectic fit in the name of Jesus. October 31st. Woo! Somebody just broke out in a cold sweat. No, don't, don't, don't do it, Pastor. October 31st, 2024, Halloween. It's right around the corner. Halloween is not just some scary fun. It's not about pumpkins and candy. It is rooted in ancient paganism. It's rooted in the occult. Amen. And it's rooted in evil. I just felt someone's Compromised spiritual eyes begin to roll. And my friend, if that is in your spirit, whoo, I'm afraid for you. I say I'm concerned. You need to hear this old pastor tonight. Amen. If you want to please God, I say if you want to make heaven your home, feel the Holy Ghost. We got to stop patty caking in this world. I say we're a holy church. We're a mind-made-up church. I ain't going to hell for nobody, for nothing. My family's going to heaven. I'm taking a women, and I want to take this church to heaven. But we can't do it patty-caking. So I'm going to be real, real tonight. Amen. So I'm going to take this church back tonight. Are you ready? Amen. We're going to get in a little time machine. We're going to go back 2,000 years ago. And perhaps it'll make it just a little more clear tonight. We're going all the way to the islands of, um, of Ireland and Scotland. Sam Hain, now called Halloween, originated with the ancient Celts as a pagan festival, marking the end of the harvest and the beginning of winter. For 1,200 years, they celebrated this festival of debauchery. It was ungodly, and it had pagan festivities that are so disgusting. I will not even cover it behind this pulpit tonight. But do you know who spread it? And this is about to shock you. Come on, how many of you ready tonight? I say this is going to shock you. Do you know who spread Halloween? It was a compromised church. Let that sink in real quick. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III, he designated November 1st to be recognized as All Saints Day or All Hallows Day. And the night before 
which is October 31st, it was designated as All Hallows' Eve, which later became Halloween. Oh, how hell must have rejoiced and witches, they must have cackled in evil delight. This ungodly transition primarily occurred in the medieval period as the compromised church sought to replace pagan festivals with so-called Christian observances. Pagan is a polytheistic, may worship many gods. They are Satanists. They are the occultists. They are the witchcraft practitioners, etc., and so forth. And so it was believed that on All Hallows' Eve or Halloween that the veil or the ether or the boundary between physical and spiritual worlds became very thin at that time, which would allow spirits, demonic spirits, to pass through where they believed that the dead could return to haunt and to walk among the living. Thus the reason for wearing the the hideous and scary evil mask and the costumes during this evil time. Amen. So, so please hear me tonight. They did this to confuse the evil spirits into thinking that the mask wearer was also, also an evil demonic spirit. In other words, it was a kindred spirit. Birds of a feather flock together. That is to say, it shows people with similar interests, values, and characteristics they associate with one another. Come on, stay with me tonight. My friend, when you walk into a department store, anybody been to Lowe's lately? Anybody been to Home Depot? Amen. I got an email today. They sent me, want me to buy a Halloween package. Amen. I said, no, thank you. Praise God. They wanted to discount it and, and give me a good deal on it. Amen. But you can't go into Walmart or, or any place, amen, where you don't see witches and goblins and ghouls and fake blood and skeletons and evil junk. And when you see that, you tell yourself that is a product of a compromised church. Come on. That's what one foot at God's table but sitting at the, devil, at the devil's table brought to the world I wonder what God is thinking about that one my friend you already know what God is thinking about it for he tells us over in Exodus 22 and 18 thou shalt not suffer a witch to live God hates it now, I'm not advocating on Halloween night. Y'all out there with a 12 gauge blowing witches away. Praise God. Praise God. It is an abomination to God. The compromised church, they went from stoning witches to putting them on life support to keeping them alive and finally naming a holiday after them, Halloween. A holiday comes from the term what? holy day which is a sacred day that is set apart for what to worship or to rest so Halloween is nothing more than hell's sacred day Christians should have absolutely no part of Halloween my friend come on it's quiet here but it's right I say it's quiet but it's right you can like it or lump it, amen. But if you want to go to heaven, you better worship through it, amen. If you done went to Walmart and bought little Susie Q, amen, her little Halloween costume and all that, amen, you can take it back, amen. And if you don't want to take it back, I'll buy it and throw it in trash and burn it up for you, praise God. But people should not, you should not partake of Halloween. It is evil. It's the most evil thing on the face of this earth right now. Come on. Leviticus 19 and 31 says, Regard not.
them that have familiar spirits neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Woo, that's a fortune teller right down the street down here and you look at that trash amen she's got spiders and webs and junk all over that you don't have any business with Halloween my friend you don't have any business with wizards and familiar spirits and tarot cards and any of that trash come on Woo, I'm fixing to rub somebody the wrong way I'm going real deep here praise God everybody say go deeper praise God Amen, I think I will. Jack-o'-lanterns. Woo! My, my, my. Somebody just got real mad just now. Jack-o'-lanterns, turnips, and gourds. They were carved with demonic faces back in the day. And carved up, and some would put human fat inside of it with candles to burn off the evil spirits that would come around. And so pardon my play tonight, on the words but a blind bat could see that witchcraft sorcery and spiritism are the driving force behind Halloween and if you can't see that already I don't even know what to tell you my friend come on the only ghost that I want to play around with and I don't want to play with it, I want to worship it, and that's the Holy Ghost. That's the only ghost that I want anything to do with. Woo! Come on. Anybody with me tonight? Woo, come on. Why don't you just stand in unity? Why don't you clap your hands if you say that? That's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Even witches, witches. Now, one of my stepmothers, I've told you before, I had a mother, a stepmother that was a witch certified from New Orleans, Louisiana. Witch had crystal balls and everything in that trashy place that you could think of. She had it all. Amen. But witches, they will testify that Halloween is their most powerful and potent night. Do you really think that God's people should be caught up in Halloween? Should the church, his holy bride, be dressing up in evil costumes on that specific night of all nights, hell's holiday, and playing around with the enemy's territory? Ten years ago when we came here, I, I just came to me when I was upstairs a minute ago, we came here 10 years ago. This was an old Presbyterian church. That's right, I just said it. Amen, if they do it, they're going to get recognized for it. Amen, it was an old Presbyterian church before it became a United Pentecostal Apostolic Church. But we prayed over it, and we cast the devil out of it in the name of Jesus. But I come here 10 years ago, and I was rummaging through everything. Amen. And there was uh, out there in that shed, uh, there was tombstones, uh, and there were ghosts, uh, and there was Halloween trash, uh, and all kinds of Halloween decorations. Uh, no wonder they went out of business. Uh, no wonder they couldn't be a church. Uh, they compromised with evil. We're not going to compromise, church. Uh, we never will. Uh, we're going to be a holy church in the name of Jesus. Admittedly, for children dressing up and playing, I know it's a lot of fun. Amen. But we as Christians, we surely don't want to do that on Halloween. October 31st, amen. We don't want to do it, amen, because that's hell's holiday. And I tell you, no, because you see, my friend, the devil is subtle. He's not going to knock on your door dressed like a devil. No, he's going to come through your television. He's going to come through children, through innocent traditions. And we cannot afford to be ignorant of the devil's devices. Now, we can have fall festivals and have a good time and, and you can dress like Moses and Jesus and, and Joshua and all that when we do that, praise God. But we don't do that on Halloween night. Come on. Some of y'all getting mad. Church, we are children of the light. Children of the light, 
do not play with the darkness. We should not even associate with it. Come on. You're absolutely missing out on nothing on Halloween night. Woo! My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I've got some fun here come happen. Amen. Do you know that Halloween night falls on Thursday night? That's a church night. And did you know we're going to worship God on that night? Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. We're going to shout. Amen. We're going to give the witches a nervous breakdown. I take authority over liberty in the name of Jesus. I found their evil plans and all their trashy deeds in the name of the Lord. It will fall flat on their face on that night. And another thing I feel to do right now, it just came to me. Amen. Since they're going to be up all night, we're going to be up all night. And we're going to worship God at the bewitching hour of 11 to 12. We're going to be worshiping God. We're going to praise God. Amen. They ain't going to have a chance at an H-E-double-L. Amen. Come on. Woo. Praise God. I'm fired up tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pastor, what's wrong with trunk or treat on Halloween night? It's a compromise. Come on. Pastor, what's wrong with kids dressing up as firemen or fairies on Halloween night? I tell you what's wrong with it, my friend. It's a compromise. It's a way to ease our conscience and fit into the world's mold so as not to feel out of place in your flesh. Come on. I know I'm rubbing somebody the wrong way tonight. Praise God. But it's fun. Praise God. But God has not called us to fit in. God has called us to separate. God has called us to endure, endure, endure unto the end. I say endure unto the end. Endure don't sound like fun, does it? But you got to endure. If you're going to make heaven your home, you got to keep going. Tell little Johnny, tell little Susie, baby, we don't have nothing to do with Halloween. We're not putting candy out. Amen. If somebody comes to your door trick-or-treating, give them a tract and say, Jesus loves you. Come on. <laughs> Woo, praise God. To be holy is to abstain from all appearances of evil. To fight the good fight. Even when the world is having its dark parties, we as light need to stand apart. Hallelujah. Church, we don't need to compromise with evil. Never, never, never do we need to compromise with evil. Amen. You don't need to smile at the dirty jokes. You don't need, come on. You don't need to say, yeah, I, I watched that. No, you don't need to do any of that. You stand up for holiness. You stand up for what is right. And don't let the devil back you in a corner. You come out swinging in the Holy Ghost. You say, no, that's evil, buddy. I don't want nothing to do with that. That's of the devil. Who are you on? Whose side are you on anyway? As for me and my house, we are on the Lord's side. Woo! Who among you is on the Lord's side? Come on, stand to your feet and clap your hands to the Lord. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. This ain't going to be no compromise, church. This ain't going to be no compromise, church. Never, 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 never. God bless you. God's church does not compromise with darkness. We do not compromise with witchcraft and ghouls and goblins and demons. Halloween is nothing but a glorification of fear, of death, and of the very things that opposes the kingdom of God. 
I wish I had it that I could put it up here on this screen, but I was in Lowe's the other day, and I was just absolutely shocked, Brother Parker. I just, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, they got skeletons 20 feet tall. They got witches that were <laughs> cackling, eyes. I'm going, my God, what kind of idiot that calls himself a Christian would have this in their yard, in their house? My Lord, it's totally against what God says. It's dark. It's evil. And God's people should never partake of it. The prophet Isaiah, come on. People are saying, oh, pastor, come on now. It's just a good old fun night. Amen. You know what I used to do on Halloween night? Amen. I was evil. I, was a, I mean, I took part into it. If it's going to be evil, I was evil. Amen. We took uh, an old skunk, and an old possum, and we knocked on the door, and we threw it up in this person's house. Amen. And that person come out screaming, and, and it was horrible, and I did that. We threw rocks on police cars. I mean, horrific stuff. I'm not even going to begin to tell you the horrible things that I did as a kid. I almost got myself killed one night. Amen. I was 12 years old, and my mama let me run the roads. Amen. We'd moved into town. Amen. This was Halloween night, and I had no business doing it. But here comes a, a carload of, 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 of fellas, and the music was a boom, boom, ba boom, 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 and, and they had the windows down. And, we, and I had a little boy with me. He was about nine, and I was about 12. And we had a box full of water balloons. And, man, we threw them water balloons, and it went right into that cold car, and it was freezing that night. And all of a sudden, you hear just nothing but screaming. Ah, we're going to kill you. My eyes got that big. I said, wait a minute, there's consequences to actions. I learned very quickly. And they come up there, and they tried to run us over and kill us. Amen. I don't even know what happened to my little buddy. Praise God. He went one way, and I went another way. And they was trying to run us over in the car. You can get yourself in the biggest mess by trying to get out and do some kind of crazy stuff on Halloween, my friend. The church should not have anything to do with it. Your children should not have anything to do with it. It's nothing but mischief and, and bad stuff. Amen. Right before the rapture, here we are. And there is certainly no time for Christians to be toying around with darkness or in spiritual battle. And I want you to know tonight that Satan plays for keeps. He plays for your soul. It just came out October 15th. Some of you people that play Fortnite, amen. Some of you people that are playing some of these uh, the very dangerous games of killing and all that stuff. If your children are playing that kind of stuff all night long, you need to stop that. Pastor, that ain't none of your business. Yes, it is my business too. Amen. I'm trying to save your soul. Amen. You want to turn your, your little child into a, a mass murderer or, or something to, to, to get them so that they don't feel absolutely nothing and they can walk into a school and just blast people away and feel like it's a game? Then you keep letting them play these games that are murdering and killing and all that other stuff. But did you know that Fortnite just had an update October the 15th and they are telling these kids now they have the devil on Fortnite and you can sell your soul to the devil. Your children playing these games and parents don't even know that their child is selling their soul to the devil. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. If you give Satan a foothold, my friend, he will take it over. And listen closely, parents. You may dress your children up as fairies and clowns and superheroes and even a Bible character, but that's night's Halloween spiritual implications. They don't change, and hell knows exactly what it's all about, whether you truly understand it or not. My friend, you can't take something that is unholy and try to make it holy by dressing it up and disguising it or concealing it. In other words, in southeast Texas vernacular, everybody say, oh boy, amen. You can't put lipstick on a pig, amen, and it's still going to be a pig. It might have big, uh, big red shiny lips, but it's going to be a pig still, amen. Oink. Praise God. We are commanded 
to come out from among them and to be separate. Amen. The age-old question tonight is this. Who will stand for righteousness? Who will stand for holiness in this wicked generation? Who will endure until the end, my friend? Praise God. I know right now that I'm probably being laughed at on live stream. Praise God. Amen. I, I know, amen, perhaps uh, other lukewarm saints, uh, amen, that stayed home should be in the house of God, but they're, how you doing? Praise God. Uh, pastor, I, pastor ain't playing tonight, is he? Amen. Amen. I, I had two cups of coffee, and I'm feeling pretty good. Amen. Amen. I know that there's some compromised churches out there tonight that are watching and they already got it all ready for trunk or treat. I already know all that. I know right now that they're making fun and they're mocking and they're joking about it. But let me remind you something about rebellion, sir, ma'am, or young person. To God, it is as the sin of witchcraft. Woo! And so that means I don't care what the world says. I don't care what a compromised church says. I don't care what a backslid, lukewarm saint of God says. Woo! I'm going to preach what the Lord has put into my spirit to preach to the house of God. Joshua said, it's for me and my house. Amen. There was a lot of people that was making fun of old Joshua. Amen. He had enough of it. He said, who's on the Lord's side? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Woo! You can laugh. You can mock. You can do all those things. You can be compromised. But I refuse. You know why? Because I want to make heaven my home. Therefore, we shall endure. Amen. Call me the oddball, but I have full intentions, full intentions on making heaven my home. Amen. I've been in this thing for a long time now. I started out with brown hair, and now I got gray hair, and I got one less molar. Praise God. But I'm going through. Amen. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it, church. Woo! I want to bring this church to heaven. Amen. I want us all to walk up to the judgment seat. Sister Nash, amen. We're going to just be shouting around that place, around the throne of God. Amen. Sister Rena Davis, we're going to take our crowns off and throw it at his feet. Woo, brother. Come on, brother Hart. Amen. You're going to turn into a young man again. Woo, hallelujah. Ain't that going to be fun? Praise God. I get my tooth back, praise the Lord. Get a chump on some heavenly steak, angel food cake, amen. No devil food, amen. We're going to stand before the word of God declaring that we serve a holy, righteous God, an all-powerful God who has absolutely no fellowship with darkness. Preacher, do you have Bible? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, no, preacher, I mean New Testament. Come on. Uh, yes, I do. Let's turn to Ephesians 5 and 11. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, rather reprove them. All right. Church, we're not here to blend in. We're not here to compromise with the world. We're not here to go along with evil to get along with evil. You got to have a backbone in living for God. You really do. Praise God. We are here to be light that shines in the darkness. And we stand for truth even when the world doesn't understand why we live holy. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have to recognize the spiritual implications of the day. Romans 12 and 2 says... Call us not, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God's people are called to be holy, separate, and unyielding, unyielding to the pressures of cultural norms that promote evil, my friend. Amen. Think about it. 
if you celebrate Halloween, then you are still connected to the historical legacy of death, fear, and superstition, even if you try to sanitize it. Come on. Turn to 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? That tells me that we cannot participate in activities that are born from such darkness, no matter how harmless that they may seem. Satanists, witches, and occultists, they love Halloween. And we've all heard of witches that have testified that Halloween is their most sacred night of power, spells, and communication with spirits. One former witch stated that Halloween was the one night that I felt truly empowered because the world accepted the darkness that I embraced and I could sense the heightened spirits uh, a heightened spiritual activity. My friend, if you want to experience a heightened spiritual activity, then you need to repent and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and it will take you higher than you've ever been in your life. There's no high like the Holy Ghost. There's no, nothing can compare to the power of the Holy Ghost, my friend. You want power? Amen. Dump witchcraft and get a hold of God. You're talking about power, miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. The spiritual significance of Halloween is real to those who practice witchcraft. But again, Ephesians 5 and 11 warns us, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Many churches have embraced Halloween alternatives, like trunk or treat, Encouraging their children to dress as firemen and fairies or superheroes uh, or as Moses uh, and Bible characters. Somehow that's supposed to make it good. Uh, but we got to ask ourselves, uh, why are we participating in, in an event uh, that is rooted in celebrating fear and darkness, uh, even when costumes uh, that seem innocent? Uh, you can call me old-fashioned if you want to. Uh, amen. A man... Uh, told me that I needed to open my mind a while back. He told me that I needed to listen to, uh, uh, to him, amen, and not the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I told him he could hit the road, and he did. Praise God. And he has never come back. And I thank God for it. Amen. You see, I'm not here to please people. I'm not here to tickle anybody's ears. And one thing you can never, ever call me my friend, and that is a compromiser. I will not ever compromise on holiness. I will not compromise on truth. I will not compromise on doctrine. In the name of Jesus Christ, you can take that to the bank, my friend. Dressing children as light in the midst of darkness, it does not change the fact that we are participating, amen, in a spiritually compromised event. Pastor, I need more Bible, just a little bit more. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22 says, Abstain, abstain from all appearance of evil. Right there, I wish I had some slides I would show you of Halloween and all of its trash. Amen. You wouldn't be able to sit there and, and, and without weeping. There are children, and I won't even go into it too deep because there are children in here. But there are children on that night that are being sacrificed. Amen. I could tell you some stuff that you would not believe that takes place on that night. Children are scared, and they, uh, the pineal gland produces uh, what's called adrenochrome, and they, they sacrifice these children inside of a pentagram, and they drink of their blood. You don't believe me, do you? Look it up. It's happening on Halloween night. 
the one that we got our children dressed up as Moses going from door to door saying trick or treat you don't even understand what you're doing but the devil knows exactly what you're doing and you under, and you you wonder why your your mind is is under attack you wonder why hell has come against your home because you're taking and partaking of a holy day a hell day and i could tell so many worse than that you don't even want to know it's absolutely disgusting Amen. Halloween is not for Christians. But our goal should be, church, to separate ourselves entirely from the spirit of that night. No compromise with evil. We must not compromise with evil by blending worldly customs with Christian practices. Is this all right tonight? Amen. It got a little quiet here. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Praise God. Satan is so subtle he'll take any opportunity to blur the lines Halloween is not just a secular holiday it is profoundly and deeply spiritual and rooted in evil practices that is absolutely abominable to God and dressing my friend as harmless characters or offering safer alternatives it doesn't change the fact that we are engaging in a known day that glorifies fear and death and the occult and celebrated by Satanists all over the world on that night night we are called to live in truth and participate not participate in Halloween no matter the form it's a compromise of darkness my friend our identity as Christians is found in Jesus Christ and not in traditions of this world Colossians 3 and 17 says Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Can we honestly say tonight that celebrating Halloween, even if it is in an innocent form, is something that we can do in Jesus' name? It's not. And if you're honest, the answer will be no. We are children of light. Ephesians 5 and 8 tells us we are called to walk as such. And Halloween is a night that glorifies darkness. And no matter how much you try to dress it up, it remains a spiritual danger for Christians. And therefore, we must reject all forms of participation in it, whether through harmless costumes, trunk or treat, or other alternatives. Instead, let's have a spiritual backbone and let's stand firm in the Word of God and unashamed separate from the world commit our lives to honor Jesus Christ come on if you believe that would you clap your hands I'm almost done if you can bear with me just a few more minutes amen raise your hand if you like this amen we got to let our light shine, church, in the midst of the world's darkness without compromise. The church is a pillar of truth. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 3.15 that the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. But where is the truth today? Many churches, they have forsaken the truth of God's Word. They have replaced it with man-made philosophies. They have diluted doctrines. They have watered down sermons that tickle the ears, that don't transform lives. Amen. If you're not where you used to be, my friend, you are backsliding. Some of you ladies used to come faithfully to prayer meeting. Oh, he's getting nosy again. Amen. But haven't been in a long time. Why not? Amen. Is the flesh taking control? Are you sliding a little back from where you used to be? If you're not going forward, my friend, then you're going backwards. It's time for the church to be the church and catch on fire. Amen. I know, I know the world. 
They say, let's not preach about sin, preacher. Let's, uh, not, oh, please, whatever you do, don't preach about hell again. Let's not preach about repentance. All the world wants now, it seems, is a comfortable church, a church without conviction, amen, a church without the devil in it, amen, and that's why many have left their first love. The compromised church preaches soft gospel because they fear man more than they fear God. But the Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 4, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the world is enmity with God with God. Amen. I cannot preach a message that pleases the world. I never will be able to. Amen. I must preach the unchanging, powerful, life transforming truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. The church is the bride of Christ. Ephesians 5 and 27 says that Jesus is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. God will not marry a bride that looks like the world. Brother Gavin, I know as much as you love your wife, Sarah, praise God, it's evident, amen. But if she had come through that door and had big old blotches of spaghetti and, 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 and McDonald's over here and all over, uh, amen, that would have kind of been a turnoff, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Because you, you know she didn't prepare herself. Uh, but she came down that aisle uh, beautiful uh, and radiant. Uh, amen. That's what we got to be. We got to be radiant. Uh, we can't have thin stains uh, upon our dress, uh, upon our walk with God. Come on. God doesn't want a bride that's compromised her purity, exchanged her white garments for stained robes, allowed worldliness and sin to creep in. God doesn't want a bride where there is no passion for prayer, no hunger for revival, no fire for holiness, or who has become complacent or lukewarm or content to stay within the walls of comfort. why the church has got to stay and return with the first love the first love amen you have to make yourself fall in love amen and do it through prayer do it through remembrance this do in remembrance of me praise the Lord Amen. If I want to stoke the fiery feelings of love, amen, I can time and time again, I, I can think back of all the times that I dated my wife. Amen. Sometimes I just think about it and it gets so happy and so exciting. Praise God. Amen. When I had my tooth, amen, and when I was so in love, praise God, and I'd take her out to eat, amen, and boy, I missed that tooth. Praise God. You can't tell. I used to, we used to go out, and I'd buy, I'd spend every dime I had, which wasn't much, because I was a bag boy at Piggly Wiggly. Amen. And I think I made probably $46 a week at that time. That was a long time ago. Praise God. No, it was $64. I remember it to the dime. Amen. $64. And I took my wife out, and we bought about a 40 something dollar uh, seafood dinner. And we were both so shy that we wouldn't even eat. We just sat there and looked at it. Boy, I wanted to eat that, that shrimp so bad. Amen, but I was too embarrassed to eat it. Boy, right now, I'd eat it and hers too. Praise God. We got to cleanse ourselves from unrighteousness. The church must be pure and spotless or we'll join in with worldly compromise on judgment day as they shriek in horror. The ones that are going to shriek in horror at the judgment day I wonder if there's someone here tonight that will stand on judgment day before God and say, but God, I went to church at New Life. God, I, I, I did. I, I sat on a pew. I, I remember even that night that he preached about the compromised church. And God, no, I, I can't be lost. I wonder if there's someone here that will hear those horrible words someday. 
means if we're to be ready for his return, we cannot afford to compromise, church, in any area of our lives. And I'm closing. Music, you can come. The danger of compromise in Revelation 3.16, Jesus speaks to the church in Laodicea. He says, because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. The compromised church is lukewarm. It's neither hot nor cold. And God is about to judge it. Compromise will cause us to lose the power and the presence of God in our midst. It will rob the church of its effectiveness. And what's worse, it leads to spiritual death. We've got to get back to the prayer room. We've got to fire the prayer room up. Prayer room starts at 30 minutes before service starts. But really, service starts at 30 minutes before the service starts. As much as we love each other, we can fellowship afterwards. Why don't we get in here and fire up the prayer room? I've noticed it's a lot of talking where it used to be a lot of weeping and praying. We got to get back to the prayer. The compromised church. It may look full, but it's spiritually bankrupt. They have the programs, the lights, the mist machines. I've actually been to churches where the fog, supposedly the Shekinah glory cloud, and the fog comes rolling in, and it's enough to make you want to puke as the dark blue lights come on and the fog machines begin to roll I'm going my Lord is this a drama or is this church what is the darkness all about we are children of the light then you ask where's the move of the Holy Ghost Where's the miracles, the signs, and the wonders? Tonight, God's looking for people who will stand on the Word of God without compromise. That's so hard to do in the day and time that we live. I've never seen so many sissified men in all my life. If that offends you, good. But straighten up. We don't need sissy men. We don't need manly women. Stay in your own gender. There's two genders. Right now, LGBTQ says there's 72. They're so confused, they don't even know what they believe. There's a call to repentance. You know the time for playing church is over? If you only knew how much time you have left, my friend. I'm looking at every one of you. If the Lord tarries 75 years from now, not one of you will be alive. Think about that. If the Lord tarries 75 years from now, practically every person that I am talking to in here will not be alive. And you want to compromise at the last moment? It amazes me. Is sin that delicious and that wonderful that you would give up eternal life for that? Fornication is fun until the disease, the heartbreak, 
the destroyed lives of children and men. Alcohol is fun until cirrhosis of the liver, destroyed homes, your wife, mine gone, your husband destroyed and in jail, third DWI. Drugs will get you high for a few moments, pleasure, until your veins are blown out and you've prostituted yourself and you've sold out and you've stolen from your family. See, the devil is nothing but a liar. Nothing but a liar. He'll show you the world and give you nothing in return. He's the father of lies. All this sin looks so wonderful. I fell for it even myself as a young man. And none of it ever pleased me. None of it could ever fill the spot in my life. But let me tell you what helped. Let me tell you what worked. Let me tell you what transformed me. And the reason that I'm married today to my wife, it is the Holy Ghost. And when I repented and God filled me with the Holy Ghost, He changed me from the inside out. And I didn't want any of that trash. I didn't want any of that superficial trash in my life anymore. Let's all stand. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 27, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. My friend, you may think you got it good right now. You may think nobody knows who you are or what you're doing behind closed doors. You may think that, but you've got a rude awakening. When the doctor walks into that room and says, uh, I'm sorry you got three months left to live, uh, like he told my daddy. My daddy had all these great plans. He was making a lot of money back in that day. Had his own business, two warehouses. He was selling them out. He was just thriving. Trucks. It was all booming. The doctor says, I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to die. You're going to die. And three months later, my dad took his last breath. You don't know how much longer you got. <laughs> Some of you, me. See, I didn't tell you, but yesterday I thought I was having a heart attack. I went to the emergency room, and I called upon the Lord. He was stabbing me in my heart. I said, God, surely not. And I told my wife, take me to the emergency room. And they put me on the EKG, and they ran the test, and they took the blood. And God healed me right there in that, in that room. I was totally and absolutely fine. They don't even know what took place. God has done that for me time after time after time. But my friend, you may not be that way. I wonder tonight who's on the Lord's side. I really do. I wonder if somebody's saying, that's for them, it ain't for me. I wonder on Halloween if you'll miss church, call the pastor, uh, Pastor, I, I won't be able to make it tonight. I, I, I've got something come up. Yeah, going trick-or-treating. You see, I can preach to people, and you've heard a thousand sermons. I'm sitting here talking to people right now. You've heard a thousand sermons, and yet you're still going to walk out this door brazenly 
and you're going to go to whatever. Whatever. You better wake up. You better wake up. You're about to be shaken. My friend, you haven't been shaken like you're about to be shaken. This world is about to come to an end. It's about to fall apart. And you can't afford to be playing around with God any longer. That time frame is over. You're blessed tonight to be standing in the presence of God. Let's all find a place to pray. I feel an urgency right now to pray in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be compromised. I refuse to be compromised. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every family here tonight. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take